All right, bless y'all. Shabbat shalom. Glory to the King. Good to see y'all. Uh, we got a guest, Frog Band here. Straight away, Goshen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is baptized the duplex. So, so uh, first person to stay tonight in the duplex. It was awesome. Uh, this is something we've been waiting for. Uh, this is something that you know we've been building, so we've been waiting for the opportunity to actually house guests. And so this is just an awesome opportunity to be able to do such a thing. And uh, my hope is that you enjoy us as much as we enjoy you being here. Hallelujah. So anyway, without further ado, uh, we're going to get into this lesson today. Um, with everything that's going on uh, within the ministry at this time and hour that we're living in, um, I thought to uh, focus back in on, and some of you is going to sound very familiar, we're pretty much going to talk about Yah's people. All right? We're going to talk about, you know, them being together. We're going to talk about them uh, and where they were in the dispensations of time and the time of Moses leading up until now and how we are together and we are one body and we are one people. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to start off in uh, Hebrews 24. All right, verse 24 and 25. It says right here, And let us consider one another to provoke <laughs> unto love and to good works. All right, and it's, I'm, I'm going to mention something on this after I read verse 25. It says, Not forsaking the assembling, of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching okay so i'm gonna go back to covid all right there was many people that were not assembling together right there were many people that were not apart there were many people watching from afar right there were many people that had left us right they did not continue with us but what happened they saw the day approaching, or at least they thought, right? Yeah. And pastors mentioned this many, many times in, uh, where, say, for they had Y2K back in, like, 99, right? And people, what'd they do? They had 75 people starting out on the community because everybody was afraid of the Y2K. You know, what happened whenever we were, me and Deacon came to the ministry back in 2011. I mean, well, guess what? You had the whole 2012 Mayan calendar thing going. <laughs> Some people were showing up for that. Yeah. You know, then the COVID came. It was like, oh, snap, here comes the mark. So then here comes folks to join themselves. You see, but you got nothing to be concerned about if you're not forsaking the assembly together. You see what I mean? And we're going to go back to verse 24, and it talks about provoking one another uh, unto love and to, unto good works. Well, how can you provoke one another unto love and unto good works if you're not around one another? If you're not assembling uh, with each other. If you're not living in, in, in common unity with one another. Okay, so this is something that we got to keep in the forefront of our minds. You can't, you cannot perform the book and not be around his people. True, that's true. You know, because it, no one has a problem with the Most High at the end of the day. Well, we can follow those first four commandments. Everybody, you got people right now, they with them, just them and their wife in their home somewhere across the United States, across the world, somewhere. It's just them. And they're perfectly fine. Just them and their family. They have a vision for the family. And that's fine. They can have a vision for their family. I tell people all the time, it's no big deal. But with this ministry and what we're trying to do in these communities, we're going one way. We are rocking one way. We're performing one way. You see what I'm saying? We're thinking one way. So when you, you, when you want to come and try to attach yourself to that, you're going to find yourself on the outside the gate. That's just the truth. Because we have, let's say, for instance, you got people like myself. El Rufus, I, I keep mentioning this. I'm going to keep mentioning it too. We have made a conscious decision to say, no, we're going to submit to this board of elders here. That's what we said. We're going to submit ourselves to this because Israel was always together. Yes. We was always, it, it, there was no apart. It, you know, mm -hmm. you can't be perfected without the people. Right. It's impossible. Thou shalt not cover it. Well, who am I going to cover after if I ain't around my brother? <laughs> I'm not going to cover it with, with my brothers. Yes. I'm not going to cover his wife. I'm not going to, you know, cover just what he has, his substance. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not even tempted to even touch if I'm never around. I know we see each other once a week, and that's brotherhood. And it don't make no sense, you know. All right, so uh, whether it's a clan, a tribe, family, village, cult, unit, whatever the case may be, uh, you were in the military, all right? It was a certain aura, a certain brotherhood, a certain morale, would you say? Yes, sir. You see what I mean? Uh, Desmond, you played collegiate sports, right? Yes, Same thing. Morale. <laughs> they had something, a camaraderie about themselves. You know? One of the things that set us apart for a long time 
You know, people will look at us and say, man, how are y'all brothers come together to do this, man? It's morale, it's camaraderie, it's the love of the brethren. It's what we got. It's a tribe. And so people want to be part of the tribe, but they don't want to function like a tribe. They want to be part of the tribe, but function like the Americans. They want to be part of the tribe, but they want to function like the rest of the heathens. They want to have their own. See, in this society, it's a very individualistic society. And I'm, I'm, we're talking about this because, you see, we got a few people leaving. You know, we got And that's, mind you, perfectly fine. You can do that. You do what you do. You know, but what I always try to do is when I meet people for the first time and they come and sit with me, right? And we, we can talk. I start telling them all kinds of how we function. And they want to talk to me about what they think. I'm like, okay, I hear what you're saying. But when you come here, this is what you, this is what we do. When you come here, this is what you're going to see. When you come here, this is the way we're walking. Well, uh, brother, listen, you need to understand that if you come this way, what you're getting yourself into, I can save you a lot of steps. I mean, I, it's, prob- it's probably a reason why we wasn't growing down there. Because I was, I'm, I'm this hard. Like, listen, I, I, I can help you out right now. You ain't going to waste my time, ain't going to waste your time. This is what we do. So you can make a conscious decision right now to just go the other way. Because if you come, this is what you're going to see. All this, which, this is, that we're going back and forth right now, we ain't going to have that back and forth when you come. It's not happening. We're already rocking a certain way. You coming to us. So I try to tell folks, you coming this way. You know, when we went to straight away for the front, we didn't ask questions. We did what they, what they do. We go on your land. We here at your spot. Your rules, your customs. You know, whatever you guys do here, you know, we're going to honor that custom. <laughs> whom honor, honor, to whom custom, custom, right? You know, I mean, come on now. That's just the book. All right, but Israel is just, a, it, we're supposed to be a huge family. And see, there's so many different schools of thoughts right now because we've just been scattered. You know, I mean, they've never really truly been one ever since the split. If you really think about it, ever since the split, when you go to the Book of Kings, all right, that you ever since the split, that is they've never really had that unity. We've never, as Israel as a whole, ever had that unity once again. Why? Because the priests think about it. Have you ever th- thought about walking in the wilderness with Moses, and he goes and speaks with Yah, and he comes down and says, "This is what we're going to do." It's pretty simple. They don't if ands bust about it because judgment was coming swiftly. So we was all one, on one accord. There was no reason. I, well, I think it, we didn't care what you thought. Y'all going to show you how much we thought. Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Breath gone. Core yeah. yeah. Dathan and Abiram. Yeah. Yeah. What we Small think? Yeah. Miriam. Oh, we, I think. Oh, really? You know, you, you see it. Yeah. You going to rise up and speak this way? Oh, well, I don't. We had some stupid idiot you know, come on uh, our platform. And on Greg videos, all oh, such young, wise young men. Oh, it's so sad you're under a foolish leader. Greg got to him before I did, you know, or whatever. I'm thinking to myself, like, I don't care what you see, you know, but what lenses do you see through? Yeah. How are you viewing? Yeah. What kind of mindset are you viewing? You know, because I see totally different. I don't see the same. I don't, I'm not seeing how he's saying. I don't see what he sees. Y'all heard me last night, man. He's a very meek man. You know, you, you mistake these words mm-hmm. and in and, and the fashion which you may hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, see, these people do well with the Joel Olsteins of the world. Nice, <laughs> soft, and cuddly. Yeah. Nice, soft, yeah. and cuddly. Yeah. And they take everything personal. You know what I mean? Yes, All right, so we understand if we go back, Israel was always together from the land of Mizraim where they were in Goshen, Mizraim. Israel grew, came out, mixed multitude. Everybody knows this, right? Mm-hmm. All right. But then Israel finally inherited the land of Cain to dwell together and to keep and guard Yah's ways together. One landmass in the land of Israel. Mm-hmm. All right. So now with us being here in the United States of America, we're all scattered abroad. All right. And y'all heard uh, we, uh, me speak about the Essenes years ago, right? So that teaching is up. You ever want to go refer to it, that's up. But that's what they did. You know, you, you, everybody knew about the Sadducees and Pharisees, but nobody really spoke about the Essenes. But these are the people in the book of Acts that you see, they literally did what they did in chapter 2, chapter 4. You know what I mean? Of coming together, having all things common. You know what I mean? 
laying everything at the apostles' feet, things of that nature. All right? So we can't be together and guard y'all's ways if we continue to live like the heathen and live in our own separate places, whatever the case may be, right? And then we only come together on feast days and on Sabbaths. I mean, how are you truly knowing one another at that point? You know, it's just, it's just impossible. And this is what you see with these people that are far off. The people that we hardly see, the people that make uh, the least amount of effort to make it to the feast days, the people that make the least amount of effort to come and congregate on the Sabbath or outside of the Sabbath. Right? Sunday, fun day. You know what I mean? I mean, literally, everybody that's here in Kentucky could, can seriously be here twice a week. Minimal. Twice a week. Especially if you in Somerset. Hey, there's no reason why you can't be here. No reason whatsoever at all. Even Greg, sometimes we see him three times a week. You know, he's all the way up there. He's an hour and a half away. But as a conscious effort made physically, your will, out of the way, you are willing your way to come here and be here because you want to be around the saints. We talk about the drivers. Elliot, it's obvious to see when he's in town, he's going to be here. You see what I mean? When we got some, they ain't, you know, oh, I'm just going to chill here. Or I'm going to stay out on the road. Or I'm gonna, whatever the case may be. But what that's doing, it's affecting your spirit. It's affecting you not having a camaraderie. It's, it's affecting you having that us meshing well together. We can't be jointly fit together because you're not around. We can't have any communion, fellowship, conversation, right? Can't have that. All right? So, but living the way we're living, you out here, you over there, all these different risks we got going on, now we know better than the Christian. We know better than the heathen that's around the bottom. We, we look just like them at that point. All right, your woman and your children are functioning a certain way when you just over there. You know, you drive up to the church house or to the tabernacle, whatever the case may be, and it's like, yeah, be on your best behavior. You know, basically, let's put up a front for these yeah. next eight hours. Yeah. Then we can bounce. Mm -hmm. Then you all of a sudden, man, they're good saints, and you move on to a community, and it's like, damn, boy, we, we didn't know this. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. That's how it be going. But anyway, what you have is bills, wasting money, carrying the low all on your own. Um, you got the loner mentality. Back in Houston, I remember we had Mom, Brenda, Catherine, and that, they, them two been together. But, man, we had, like, three different sisters stay with y'all. had Rachel stay with y'all, right? Then Nastasha. Kyrisha. Three, right? So three different sisters. You know, it's like, but why? Why, why be in your apartment, you and yours, her and her home? And, you know, it's just, it's a weight. It's better if we could just be together. You know what I mean? Rather than be on your own. All right? But so we ought to seek the old pastor, all right? Jeremiah 6, verse 16 says, Thus saith Yah, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old past. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. All right? So the idea is, once again, we got all these folks that just... The issue we have amongst many of people that call themselves Israel today is they can't be in submission one towards another. They can't. They can't submit one towards another. Whatsoever at all. I don't know how many times you hear a pastor talk about Ranger showed up. Now we got Frogman, and, and we're going to ask Frogman, does pastor submit to you whenever you have the range? Yes, sir. And that's the chief of the ministry. He just submits to it. You see, pastor... He made mention of this some time ago. And I'm going to say this. I made mention of this on this land. You guys have to honor the delegation. All right? And I'm going to just go ahead and give y'all a backstory. I told y'all this multiple times, but I probably didn't tell y'all this one. Remember I told y'all I worked with Brett? We were working on the fence or something like that? Okay, well, we worked on something else. We were working on like a, a – they had like a little hooch. Where they had like mops and brooms that were hanging, like a broom closet, but it's outside, right? Well, they had me and Brett fix that thing up and set it in place. Brett didn't hardly do shit. They just had me out there working with him. And Brett was just pointing and telling me, don't think, hey, once again, you live here, I don't. They, this is who they got me working with, so I'm just listening to what you say. That's it. Mind you, I'm an elder. This is a brother. You know, whatever. He ain't even married. They just got me working. I'm like, fine. Everything he said do, I just did. Fair point blank. I even thought we could, I, I gave a suggestion. He said no to a few, to most of them. One of them he took. That's it. Ain't got nothing to do with me. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, hey, 
But who 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 did this uh this hooch over here for the for the mops and the broom? Oh, Brett did. Ain't gonna be here to miss. Brett did. I I I was putting hands on it, but he did it. And I keep saying that. Mm-hmm. Same thing here. Whatever Mom Brenda say in the garden, we gonna do. Mm-hmm. Don't give her no lip. All right. Catherine's gonna be over the chickens. Now we're gonna do some incubating. Dick gonna work with you and show you how to do this. But then from that point, we're gonna do what Catherine say. Yeah. It's easy. Why why, why have Dick way down with the chickens in the building? Mm-hmm. And then to run around picking up building material. Chris, go stand up in the back. Yes, sir. So, but why be way down with that? Right? I mean, I'm doing my best to delegate. I'm, t- I'm like, hey, here. Hey, Dad, I need you to dispatch him. I think probably after about a month or two, I just did say, well, whatever, he got it. He owned it. Sit up. So, but the idea is delegate. And I honor the delegation, even my own self. Okay, Erica's uh, cares over the storage room. Do what she say. That's it. Why take so much upon yourself? We're going to be like Mary in the day. You know, we're going to be like Cor Dathan and Baron. Well, you take too, too much on you. Mm-hmm. Pass them that over here. Nah, nah, you just just listen. Don't worry. If you don't got a job, you will one day. I promise you. Then we're going to be listening to you in that area. Mm-hmm. Erica goes down. Guess what I need? I, right right away, food going to go to Candace, and then uh, Kara's going to take up the rest. That's it. Follow that. I don't want to hear nothing else. If y'all come to me, I'm just going to say what I've always, always said on the delegation. Period, point blank. Now, this, the, this is also fulfilling one of the principles of the book. You know, mm-hmm. we're submitting one to another. Mm-hmm. That's all we're doing, submitting one to another. And it's pretty simple. When you're so full of self, though, you can't submit like this. So I grew up and I came up in the field. And I told t- talking to Desmond about this. He was able to run a job this week, and I could be the grunt on that job. I did what he told me to do. And then guess what? Next week, he's coming to my job. And I'm telling five of them what to do. And then, T. Willie, really, you, you run the job down there, and uh, you're going to be in, we're going to go over there to, uh, I don't know, Nashville. And guess who's running that job? You are. And we wrap up. We're going to come up, meet up with you. You're going to tell us what to do. See, so that's why it's so easy for me just to listen to people. Obey. I just, okay, what are we doing? T, what are we going to do, man? Oh, this one? This is it? Okay, cool. Brother, if you choose it, we buying it. Done. Mm-hmm. It's simple. That's a team atmosphere, though. Yeah. That's a team. Everybody, Every man has this responsibility. Yeah. I got A gap. You got C gap. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, that's your responsibility. Yeah. Play your lane and we good. Yeah. <laughs> Play your lane and we straight. All right? So... Uh, Israel's always together and not apart. Period, point blank. People want to have concubines and otherwise they want to have, want to have them at different locations and all that stuff. We ain't doing that, man. We're going to be together. That's what we're going to do. Family meant to be together. And we're going to jump our family off at one location. No, 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 no. That, that family needs to be with you. You got a roof over your head, they need to be with you. Period, point blank. The only reason why somebody needs to be apart, you know, I've had to travel for work. Something like that. You know, I'm going out of town or we're on a mission looking for land or something like that. There's reasons for it. But if it's within your power to have your family, your family needs to be with you. All right? The people. As a people, we got to understand and comprehend and rever- and have reverence for authority. All right? As people, we must also desire what is best for the whole and abhor selfishness. So we have to be desirous of putting the best man up front. We have to. We got to, you know, it's, it's no big deal. I mean, I have literally just came off of stuff. You know, I said, man, you know what? I ain't even going to try to do no finish work. Deacon got it. You know what I mean? Or, shoot, Pastor, I mean, one time I was in Block Talk, and Pastor Cole was sitting right there. He's like, man, Elder, you've been quiet. I'm like, Shh. we got both of y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what you want me to say? You know, got the two pastors here. I got nothing to say. I'm not going to bring the impact like y'all. You know, that's where it is. All right, so I, I, it's a desire to have the best out front. Mm-hmm. You know, you desire to do potatoes, so I don't. So I guess I'm going to let you do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's, you are desire to do so. Dad's got convictions that I don't have. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not going to try to, well, I'm the head, so I need to do it. No, nah, man, you do it. you helping me. Mm-hmm. You know, shoot, be a blessing to the tribe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All right, one mind, okay? Uh, 
as a people, we must also the desire to be tribal minded. Okay, because it's about the tribe. All right, thinking the same way, sharing common goals, loving one another. We must know ourselves and know our place within the body so that we can run like a world on machine, okay? Not everyone's going to be the head. Not everybody's going to be, you know, everybody wants to be at a certain point. But if, if you're not there, you're not there. True. You know, if you're not the best man to run the back hole, then you ain't running it. True. Get over it. Get over it yourself. <laughs> Shit, man, you might be the most proficient in dirt work. Man, be happy with it. <laughs> like, boy, he digs some nice holes. <laughs> Like, just be content. That's where your that's where your lane is. You know, I mean, I've, we've talked about pops, Elder Daryl being off the job just to just to take care of the land. The land is awesome when he's here. Deep don't do such a great job, but Elder Daryl, oh my God, I mean, he does an immaculate job. Deep, second plate, you know what I mean? It's cool. I, I don't want to do it, so I'd rather Deep do it. So you know. He's in his office, man. He's serving, brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he, he loves doing it. You know? So but there's things we do great. There's things we not do so great. So if I discern and see that you got a problem or you got a, a, a spirit that jump on you every time I ask you to do something, then I probably ain't going to ask you to do it no more. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to give you something else to do. And you're going to wonder one day, well, well I want to do this. It's like, well, you, well, when I used to try to get you to do it, you didn't want to do it. But you know, I'm on man, I'm on woman, I'm you know, I got my own mind, I got better ideas, and you know, don't worry, when you get your job, we can do it your way. Right? You see? <laughs> so, all right, one mind. So once again, we got the teachers Eric's of the world, we got the elder officers of the world, we got all these folks of the world. Somewhere along the line, they detoured. They got off the boat. Whatever the case may be. Now I'm not gonna I don't bash them. I don't do that because I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm not looking at myself, and I'm not gonna be like. I'm not gonna be too sure of myself. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna think myself to be something when I'm nothing. That's just me. Yes, so my prayer is that y'all keep me. Yes, That's it. Hallelujah. All right. But I want to be in the body. I don't. I can't fathom being to myself. I can't fathom, man. Just me, Eric, and the children, and we out there living an hour or two away from the saints, and we just by ourselves, and I gotta carry the whole way. I just. I, that's, can I do? Yeah, but man, I don't. I don't want that for my family. I don't want that for my churn or my wife. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I don't want that for them. Yeah. You know, I couldn't fathom being outside the body of the Messiah, man. I couldn't see it. So one more, let's, get, let's hit that real quick. So Genesis eleven five, and it says, and Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it. And it says, and Yahweh said, behold, the people is one. All right. And it says, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So, but it just shows you the power of one. It just shows you that when we are collective in what we're going to do, it's huge. I mean, he says, ain't, they, ain't nothing going to stand before them. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing, they can't, anything. Right? They just kind of hit on this at, at uh, the feast. Right? So, one, H259, it says united. All right? When we are united, all right? Alike, alone, all together, anything, a piece, a certain, daily, each, you know, I mean, it, it just goes on, you know? Um, together. All right? These are some of the definitions of this word one, united. All right? And what they imagine to, meaning what they plan to do, what they plotted to do. What they've conjured up in their mind to do. So we plan all the time. You know, and when we're one in it, it goes well. When we're not one in it, everybody got these differing opinions that don't go too well. So well. It don't it don't work out. Alright? This is why whenever we come together at the feast and whatnot, we want to see the movie Yah, when we're not in oneness, it just stunts. It stunts the most high. Just like how Jesus said in all this one, we, we gotta we gotta fast. You know? Or unbelief is in oh oh we gotta we gotta move around because you know there's too much unbelief up in here. Mm-hmm. You know, you we could be over there laying hands on somebody, man, you just like I ain't gonna have it. You be sitting back here, I ain't have shit. Mm-hmm. You ever been in a room and we we praying for somebody, doing deliverance on somebody, and you could feel somebody at your three o'clock, you just there's just a thick presence there, man. I can remember man when we was in H Town, we first started doing deliverance, man. I remember we had a sister right from me, man. I was doing deliverance, calling out spirits on the man. And I just, at 1 o'clock, man, she was just sitting there. This sister was just simmering, just oozing, was just unbelief. 
I mean, not even only unbelief, man. She just had a foul spirit on her. And you could feel just that evil presence coming from this way, this direction. I'm just feeling it's kind of like, man, hold up. Then when we started doing it, separating. Like, no, nah, you three stay here. The rest of y'all leave. Bye. You just you gotta do that sometime. You know, I'm I'm feeling we 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 going in. I'm just I'm just, it's just too much here. It's just we not on the same page, man. Yeah, y'all got the room. But one is when we united, man, we, we good. All right, Matthew eighteen nineteen. It says again, I say unto you, it says that if two or two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in Shemaim. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Okay? So, I mean, that's a beautiful thing. All right? But we also know you can't ask amiss, like the book of James says. Right? That we consume things upon our own lust. But we going in praying for something, but we consume it our own lust. You know, some brothers, they want things for certain reasons. You know, you got, you got, you got evil intentions and why you want stuff. Sisters, evil intentions are why they want stuff. And these things never come to fruition. You know, I think Elder Rufus actually hit on this some time ago on one of his uh, uh, blog talks, uh, probably within the last month or so. He was, he was speaking in the same vein. You know, sometimes we go in and pray, or we're going to pray for this, but, you know, really we're hoping that, you know, we're going to pray in this area so that, oh, eventually it's like, oh, well, we didn't want it, but, you know, it happened anyway. You know, people have evil intentions like that. <laughs> or oh, I'm speaking to, I don't know, I'm speaking to the system trying to win her. But you kind of throwing in, you know, you can speak in a certain tone. You, you, can, you can give off a spirit. You know, you can give off the notion that, you know, I'm, I'm, we, I'm witnessing, but I'm witnessing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm witnessing to you, you know, sister. You know, but you, you really want more. Yes. You know, you just can't love as that sister, you know. So you can't just love her and just get her right. You gotta. I, I, I need you too. At the same time, why not just make just make sure y'all got another wife first. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? That's what we gotta do. Yeah. All right. So let's go Ecclesiastes chapter four verse nine. Okay, it says two are better than one. Okay, because they have a good reward for their labor. All right, for if they fall. The one will lift up his fellow, but woe unto him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. All right. So a lot of people say, "Well, God may help me." Ain't the same. Ain't the same. Got 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 your wife, and she ain't. Yeah, I heard overheard y'all speaking about you know caring or being uh, strong enough to carry the heaviest person, but the, the, the heaviest her being light enough to you know for your brother to carry him, stuff like that. Well, men, this is all about, I mean, when the father spoke, he spoke to men. Yeah. It's what he spoke. When he numbered the children coming out of misery, he said 600,000 men beside children. Yeah. He didn't even name the women. Everything is numbered by the men. Everything. You don't be here on press. But I can recall something being named was Solomon. With all the wives and concubines he had. Other than that, I don't, when, you, when I read, when they took the census of the, uh, uh, of the tribes, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing, of the men. And what they number about 20 years and up. You know, able to go to war. So Ethan and Caleb and them, they wouldn't even be numbered in it. So it'd be, you the youngest one, it'd be from you up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, we can't be lone rangers out there. You know, it's just, there's no safety in that. All right, Amos 3.3 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Okay, and that, and that's just that's just the truth. That's difficult that we're gonna be jointly fitted together. I love you. I care about you, but I'm out. Sit, sit back. Uh, all right. So anyway, First Corinthians fifteen thirty three says, "Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners." All right. So these these evil communications is your interaction. That's what that is. Our interaction. Our phone conversations, when we're around each other, the interactions which we have, right? Uh, the, the, the interactions which we create. Because we can create certain interactions. Every time me and Frog man get around, man, we can't help but just talk shit about Christian. Just can't. He, he gonna mention, I'm gonna mention. Somebody gonna mention. 
we just we got the dog. We, we, he gonna be his name gonna be in our mouth every time he and I get together. That's an interaction we create. And if we get a new brother come around and he's overhearing this interaction, but we know to shut the hell up when another brother come around, but then they catch a wind of it. Now we evenly affecting his mind pertaining to this brother. Mm-hmm. It's a corrupt, good man, but he has a certain mannerism that which is good. And our interactions is corrupting that good mind. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's, it's these manners are habits. Mm-hmm. So this is whenever all of a sudden your habit change. Mm-hmm. You know, you hear pastors speak on this stuff. The hat, you know, uh, your, your your gait changes, the way you carry yourself, the way you walk. You know, your nature has changed. You know, and so we're trying to figure out what changed. So every time somebody leaves, pastor's like, well, what changed? Mm-hmm. You know, because at the end of the day, you, you, you both in, in great swelling words mm-hmm. one year, and then two years later, now you speak in evil. Mm-hmm. So what happened? Mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, honestly, if Shepherd ever offended me, I'm going to him. I'm going to go to him. I mean, at the end of the day, does he not need Jesus too? Does he not need Messiah as well? Mm-hmm. I mean, I say, so yeah, all the time. I still need Messiah. Mm-hmm. I would rather give, be given an opportunity if I offend you to get it right, at least. Mm-hmm. If you can afford me that before you just leave and start talking shit. Mm-hmm. At least that's what I would want. Yeah. All right, we're going to talk something about that too. All right. Um, think of uh, what the body can do if we all. <laughs> Or of the same mind, thinking the same thing, going the same direction. All right, so we're gonna start with First Corinthians chapter twelve. All right, and it's verse twelve. It says, "For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are uh, are one body, so also is Messiah." Okay, thirteen. For by one Spirit all or are we all baptized into one body, mm-hmm. whether we be Yahudim or uh, Goyim. All right, whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. All right, for the body is not one member, but many. Strong man, strong homes, strong assembly makes us a strong ministry. All right, therefore, um, we are a strong body. Okay, now y'all have heard me say this many, many times. Okay, so um, we have to avoid being uh, doing is being like what I said about Korah, Dathan or Biram. All right, or being like Miriam or and rising up and, and and speaking evil of those that have the headship. Or if anything, pray for them. You know, the greater combination, right? Mm-hmm. So help make it easier. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, if if, if uh, you're dubbed captain of the defense, I mean, well, we got to give you an opportunity to do that. You know, to the coach to see uh, uh, otherwise. Or don't the players choose the captains? The players, right? The team. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So I mean, the players might be like, man, he ain't he ain't got it. You know, I mean, they may just pass on somebody else. All right. And we're going to get to that in the Bible, too, because your peers actually choose the heads. All right. We get to that as well. People know, you know, it's, it's no secret. All right. Um, but, you know, when you get, look at something like a core death and a bearing, we spoke about this not too long ago, but everything that, that pertains to the end is swallowed up. Right. And so it gives a whole new meaning to people being the priests of their homes, yeah. you know, because you, you can not only hinder or hurt, um, you know, yourself, but then you can hurt that which you are over, mm-hmm. what you deem, which you have been deemed headship over, mm-hmm. you know. So it's something that we got to really, really, truly be careful with, man, um, of leading people astray, mm-hmm. of leading your homes astray. And see, now this is even gives even more credence to a father performing a weighty matter. Because they can be giving a dog to a foolish man, mm-hmm. right? Or a man that's going to be easily going out the way, mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be. You know, these things can happen. Because if somebody's not walking in the same vein and you over here giving daughters away, I mean, that's the way it matters. Mm-hmm. To a holy home, a righteous home, you want to give her to. Not something that's just, just destitute, that's just a void of the spirit. You don't want that. And us, we got to teach our boys to be, uh, likewise, honorable young men, that they may be able to receive, you know, straight up. But this is why we're creating, once again, Israel with these communities. You know, we got uh, close to 100 some acres here. We got 100 acres down there in Tennessee. We got 130 acres up there in Goshen. You see what I mean? As of right now, I, if my daughter was of age, man, I'd be 
And if, even my sons of age, I'm looking at daughters on these communities. Georgia. You see, that's it. It's, it's going to be right here. Mm-hmm. That's Israel for me. Mm-hmm. If you outside that, I'm... No, no, we got other homesteads and communities. I'm just saying, I'm just naming those as an example. This is where I'm looking. I'm looking within the body. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking outside the body. Mm-hmm. That's how we should be. Mm-hmm. So that's why I don't get when people people bounce or they want to do have an alternative plan and they got alternative motives and they're going to do alternative things. You know, I'm thinking, well, what are you going to do just with your family? That's why I be wondering. Mm-hmm. What you going to do? Mm-hmm. You got all these sons, you got all these daughters. I mean, they going to marry each other? I just be wondering, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, because you say you're Israel, you say you would, but you totally different. You walk in a totally different vein. Well, we preach, you say, well, I think differently. That's what it is. All right. Romans 12, 16 says, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. All right. Uh, Philippians 2 1 it says if there be therefore any consolation in Messiah if any comfort of love if any fellowship of the spirit if any bowels of mercies fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded alright having the same love being one accord one mind okay so it, he's not telling us to be different whatsoever at all I've told people many many times I remember when I first came to the ministry and I said hey I do polygyny they said no I said alright I ain't say nothing else it stopped right there. Mm-hmm. Two years later, boom, pleasure. <laughs> you know, I remember Pastor told a story. A guy came up to him and said, hey, you know, the name of God isn't God, it's Yah. And he showed him something. And see, he told him a verse in Psalms. And Pastor said, all right, whatever. That's cool. He didn't say nothing. He's just, I got you. He did not, he wouldn't say Jah or Yah, right? The guy left. And one day he heard, overheard Pastor make, uh, on a teaching. And he was saying, Yah. He came back. <laughs> you know, it was just because you're fitting what I think now. Mm. I can sit under you because now you're saying everything I want you to say. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know who he is, but they just told me that he came back. You know, and he had witnesses him, Rich, and Elder Becker, Deacon. You know, they told me, like, yeah, it's true. Mm. He bounced. You know, hey man, we need to be doing the Holy Spirit. We ain't preaching the Holy Spirit enough, so you bounce. But we're just not doing enough. But next thing you know, the ministry grows to that point, and now all of a sudden you want to come back in, bro. Bro, you post the idea is we're supposed to be sticking together. Mm-hmm. We're growing together. Mm-hmm. We don't have priests. We ain't got y'all on the mercy seat. Yeah. You know, we ain't got nobody to go behind the veil and, and find out what thus saith y'all. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody a prophet. Mm-hmm. So we're growing together. That's what we're doing. Because I'm sorry, at the end of the day. Uh, I want to say around 2010 time, there was probably only five people on the internet speaking about the Mosai mm-hmm. that I could remember. It wasn't many at all. And all of a sudden, I mean, a few years later, everybody and their mama is a, is a teacher, is a, a ra- ra- Raha or, or a shepherd or, a, or they, everybody's something now. Everybody's something now, man. Everybody meets you down and, you know, everybody's something. So it's just like, man, we can't grow together. You can't just be happy that Christ being preached. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, boys just can't. They just can't. Can't get with it. But this is why we can't be one. All right. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.10. So now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our master, Yeshua Mashiach, mm-hmm. that ye all speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions mm-hmm. among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Once again, how can we do that when you got an alternate personality? But I know if we all surround your doctrine and we go the way you going and we 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 pick uh, we boast you up, then we good. Shoes on the other foot, we good. As long as we follow somebody else that you don't like or dub, it's a problem. And what people have to understand is, man, Pastor just not out here just doing his own thing. When we sit in judgments, man, we we we're contrary. We be tit for tat. It be, we go back and forth. It ain't just like, I mean, what we sitting there for? I mean, if we, we call Joe, we just sitting there, that's all we doing? Yeah. That ain't how it go. Yeah. He, he wants us to speak, right, Deke? Yes, sir. Don't he want us to talk? Oh, yeah. What he told us? Last time? Yeah. yeah don't just sit there. Uh, don't look like a bunch of peacocks. If you're just sitting there not 
engaging figureheads. Yeah, mm-hmm. not adding anything that he don't want you to. Mm-hmm. That's the chief of the ministry. Mm-hmm. So he ain't just making shit up. <coughs> All right, so that's a witness right there. He was in there with me. Mm-hmm. All right, but we got no room for selfishness. All right, if you got selfishness, this is what's going to detour us from being in an assembly, from being together, from moving forward. You know, people going to say what they're going to say. People that are without, we don't, I'm not worried about the noise. I'm not worried about it. My focus is us that are within and the people that are coming in to join. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, they still going to be disgruntled. They're still going to be in total disagreement, even with each other. And they will have no fellowship one with another. They will continue to speak evil of each other's teachings, of ours, of what we think. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, hell, you, people start off saying Yeshua HaMashiach, then that's saying, you know, Paul's a false apostle. Then that's saying, you know, Christ, he, 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 he's false. And then all, now you don't need the renewed covenant. Then they're going to go to just all you need is the Tanakh. Then they're going to discount the Tanakh. And then they're going to say all you need is the law. And then guess what the next phase is? I'm done with it. Matter of fact, this is bullshit. I'm they on something else. That's that. That is the pattern I've seen. People come in, they go hard at it because they want to equate their rationale that you got from what this society. You're going to take the rationale which you developed from this, from this society. Number one, we ain't got all the books. Pastors went over that last night, right? Yeah. No more. And, and then you already know the book's been touched. It's been transliterated, and in some places translated, right? I mean, so. The idea is what we have, and that's why, see, that's what I understand when people discount the spirit of the matter. You know, at the end of the day, if you got the Ruach, man, and you got the spirit leading and guiding you to all truth like the Messiah told us, mm-hmm. he's going to lead behind the comforter mm-hmm. to take us by the hand and lead us mm-hmm. to walk before us into all truth and knowledge where he'll have mm-hmm. us to go. Mm-hmm. See, when you got that, then that's why we could be on the same wavelength. Mm-hmm. So when you got that, then we can agree with one another. But at the end of the day, see, we are at least a people striving to please Yah. See, we are coming together to strive to please Him. And we're setting up heads and leaders. And we hold the leaders to the fire. I literally told the brothers this that drive trucks. I said, listen, y'all be out there grinding out on the road. Y'all should be, like, hitting. Y'all should be wearing dick ass out each week. Y'all should be asking me. When y'all show up here, y'all should be like, all right, what y'all been doing? I literally told them that. Y'all should get here and be like, what y'all been doing? I mean, I, I'm talking about myself, so I already know I got stuff to show them. But that's what they should be saying. Yeah. What y'all been doing? Mm-hmm. Every day I'm at what y'all done did, right? I want to know. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is all y'all did today? All right. <laughs> I'll be doing that. All right, cool. <laughs> Some days, oh, y'all got a lot of that. Give y'all niggas today. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, is it? <laughs> I'll be gone for two weeks, come back. Is it? <laughs> So, but the idea is hold to the fire, yes, mm-hmm. but also hold your leaders to the fire. I've literally asked pastors a question. He just looked at me, looked away. Let's walk away. All right, cool. Hey, I said something, you know, it might've been stupid. It might've been on point. It might've been righteous. It might've, I don't know. I'm willing to take the rebuke because then I'm just trying to be right. That's it. You know what I mean? All right, so selfishness. We ain't got time for it. All right, chapter uh, 18 of Proverbs, verse 1, it says, this is in the scripture verse, it's, it's, it reads like this, the separatist seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound wisdom. All right, and the KJV it says, through desire a man, uh, through desire a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. All right, because you get in the way of wisdom, whether that be wisdom that you get from the elders, the leaders, whatever the case may be, or whether it's, it might be Yah. So you fight against the Most High. You praying for some boy, he giving you the answer. He just that can't be it. That can't be it. You know, I'm gonna do this because that can't be it. But you boasted for years that this was it. You know what I mean? I had a witness, or you had a witness. We have to have witness. Sure. But what is a witness now? People are asking themselves these questions, man. Proverbs 8, 13 says, The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, 
and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. So, so you can't be within, man, and speak evil of that which you're a part of. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You know what I mean? So all you're doing is just beating down what you're part of. you just growing as hell living on the same land with the people that you can't stand. That don't make sense. you wasting a whole hell of a lot of time. You got, man, you got the rest of it. Man, go live it up, man. I mean, it's just, your life is spit away anyway. Go get it in. YOLO. Go get it in. Is that what it is? What that mean? Your only little ones, baby. Get it in. Live it up. Get it in, man. Yeah, fill it up. I pressured one young brother to leave. Because I was talking like this one time. But I was being serious. This is like, don't waste your time. Don't waste our time. If this is not what you want, you can, you don't have to stay. You, Hey, feel free, man. We'll set you up. We'll hook you up. We got you. It's like when Blake left. Boy, that boy, I hit him up two weeks left, man. So how are things going, man? Oh, I'm at peace, brother. I'm at <laughs> peace. <laughs> Meaning you wasn't at peace with us. <laughs> so at peace, brother, it's wonderful. It's wonderful, brother. <laughs> wonderful. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Great. Good to hear. So, but you know what I mean? This is this is how they speak. This is how they talk. Mm-hmm. All right? You speak evil of what you're doing. All right? But y'all ain't sleeping on this stuff either. Mm-hmm. He's hearing every outer word what you're speaking and what you're saying. Mm-hmm. See, my thing is, why can't you look at King David and see that even though he was anointed king, that he still wouldn't speak evil of the man of Yah. Yeah. He still would not speak of the king of Israel. He just wouldn't do it. He was like, I'm not going to put my mouth on him. I'm not going to put my hand to him. I'm not going to do these things. There's something to that, man. You can't be doing that stuff. Well, I don't understand. Well, then stay un- not understanding. Ask y'all for understanding. You know, what people have to separate is the man, but then you, this man also has a calling. All right? So let's say, for instance, you can think what you want, let's say, for instance, of El Rufus. Because, you know, there's been many people that don't like El Rufus, right? Okay, well, you have the man El Rufus, but then you have, you have no, you have Rufus Carswell, the man, yeah. but then you have Elder Rufus. Yes. Okay? So, and something that I picked up, uh, that I've learned from him and Pastor has been, sometimes when I have to counsel Erica, my wife, you know what I got to do? I got to be like, all right, I'm not husband, I'm Elder. What's up? Mm-hmm. So I'm counseling her. How to deal with me. You got to do that. I got to take that hat off. I have to view it that way. You got to do that with your woman. You got to do that with your children. You know what I mean? So because when you sit with the wife, well, you got, guess what you're doing? Judging yourself too at the same time? Well, okay, well, well, how, all right, how's husband? Well, what are you lacking? What are you needing? And she, she telling you all about your ass. And you seem to shoot fit. And so, but you can't do that. You got to be like, okay, well, if this is the case, then this is what you need to be doing. You know, mm-hmm. you got to keep them in the love of the most high. You got to keep them in the love of the book yeah. mm-hmm. and what they should be doing, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. So you can think what you want about the man, but you need to honor what Yah has set this man up to do yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. People don't like titles, you know, especially people that are without. Boy, they hate leadership. They cannot stand it whatsoever at all because you know they are priests. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> some some of them are Moses, you know. Some of them are Elijah. Yeah. You know that's who they are. They they yeah. said it. Well, we get emails, man. This is the messenger of God, <laughs> boy. Oh man, I'm, you know what? I'm about to pull it. Up. I'm gonna read y'all. I ain't even read it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read y'all the latest one. I'm gonna read y'all the latest one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the email, man. I have not read it. 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 A request. I I, I can't even start, bro. I, I can't even start. I, I I'm not even going to try to start. That's a long ass email. Uh, I got another one. Uh. I ain't even gonna start. Oh, come read this title. What'd that say? 
It says, uh, message from Yah to Charles Dow. All right, have a seat. Wow. <laughs> Messenger of God. Yep. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The most high emailing, bro. Most high, most high like technology now. So he don't send prophets no more, I guess. He don't send prophets no more. I mean, I'm just saying, this is what we got. This is why we can't be one. This is why Israel can't be one. I mean, pastor has said many, many times, think about it. When he ordained pastor, pastor Corey, pastor, right? I literally gave pastor Dow a call. I said, okay, pastor, so should I now be sending tithes to him and you? He said, man, bless you. He says, you know, because of my mindset. Like, that, but no, but you don't. Them people there is going to give all, the all tithes staying there. I was like, okay, hallelujah. Glory to the cash I wants to know. So there are other men of Yah out there. He's been saying that. He ain't the only one. How many times he got to talk like that? So which one of you out there can come together and do the same thing? And we will support you. We got you. You know what I'm saying? But no one can be joined together. No one can hold each other accountable. Can't he, he, He's a pastor that can't tell another pastor to do or another teacher or whatever. So You know what I mean? The idea is that we're supposed to be calling each other out. You know, in a, in a righteous sense. Meaning, hey, I think you're missing it right here, Pastor. I mean, my brother, I'm just coming in. Hey, I'm coming to love, man. Hey, can we talk? This is just something I see. Whatever. I mean, can we just speak like men? Just deal? All right. So anyway, we're going to go to chapter 5 of Acts. All right. We're going to hit verse 1 and 2. It says, But a certain man named Ananias would sapphire his wife, sold a possession, and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy, means she had the knowledge of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So this is selfishness, like I'm saying. So I'm still on selfishness. I've detoured a little bit, but I'm still on selfishness. Okay? So this is holding back. And many times I talk about people hold back in their labor. They hold back in their prayers. You know what I'm saying? They hold back in their fasting. They hold back in their studying. They hold back in their finances. They hold back in every which way. And all that does is just hinder the work from going forward. Because think about it. There's some, like I said many, many times before, we can have a, 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 a beautiful praise session. At time, other times we can't. That's because we got hold, people holding back. You holding back. Some of you holding back. All right. Sirach 43 tells us not to be holding back. We can never go far enough. All right. So we're going to go to Sirach. Speaking of Sirach. All right. We're going to Sirach. We're going to hit a few different verses, really, throughout Sirach. Three, three <laughs> verses. All right. Um, Sirach 14.3. It's going to be Sirach 14.10 and 31.24. I'm going to say it again, though. All right. So Sirach 14.3 says, Riches are not calmly for a niggard. <coughs> and what should an envious man do with money? It's a question. <coughs> All right. So we, 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 basically we're speaking about niggard. You know? And, and Sirach 14.10 says, A wicked eye envieth his bread. And he is a niggard at his table. All right. Yeah, Marie, I'm, we're going to talk about what it is. Uh, Sirach 31 24, but against him that is a nigger is his meat, the whole city shall murmur, and the testimonies of his niggardness shall not be doubted of. Not be doubted of. Meaning, oh, it, mean you got yourself a name. You know what I mean? You got, oh, oh yeah, he, he got himself a name. So, nigger, stingy, a, a covetous person. <laughs> covetous, stingy, all right, a miser. All right, when you look up miser, it's a person that's very stingy with even money, you know. So, but we can't be stingy, man. We can't be uh, selfish trying to or, or seeking to push towards community or being in oneness in community. You can't. Selfishness, it has no place. All you're going to do is stall the work. That's all you're going to do. All right, so we're going to... Uh, 2 Thessalonians 3.13 says, Be ye, brethren, not weary in well-doing. Okay, so, you know, the opposite of that is you being well, being well-to-do. All right? Do well one to another. That's what we should be doing. All right, Proverbs 3, 27 and 28. So, Proverbs 3, 27 and 28 says, Withhold not good from them whom it is due. All right? When it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give when thou hast it uh, by thee. All right? Uh, 
So we shouldn't be withholding from our neighbor. There's been many times we've given one towards another. All right? There's been many times we've given uh, to people that are without. You know? Uh, meaning that don't live here just as of yet. Don't mean they might not live here one day, but, you know, they may not be here as of yet. Uh, the ministry does it. You know, he did it with uh, that sister that was taking care of uh, Papa Dow, even. Replaced her job with take care and paid her more. You see what I'm saying? We just we figure out ways to relieve people. Oh man, we I'm in debt, man. I'm I'm up to I'm up to my neck, man, in this debt. Okay, cool. What, what you got debt in? You named off all day. Okay, cool. Hey, all right, listen, we'll take that car note off of you. We take the vehicle and we find out who in Israel has a need for it. And we give it to them. We got two vehicles sitting here to prove it. One from Straightway, Tennessee, one from Straightway, Georgia. Just blessing. That's it, man. That's how we should be. Not withholding. Right? All right. So uh, we're going to go also to Leviticus chapter 6 real quick. All right. Leviticus 6, 2 through 5. Right? It says, if a soul sin and commit a trespass against Yahweh and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep or in fellowship or in a thing taken away by violence, or have deceived his neighbor, or have found that which was lost and lies concerning it, and swear falsely in any of these that a man doeth sinning therein, then it shall be, because he hath sinned and is guilty, that he shall restore that which he took violently away, or the thing which he hath deceitfully gotten, or that which was delivered him to keep, or the lost thing which he has found. All right, so... Not only that, though, it says, or all that about which he hath sworn falsely, he shall even restore it in the principle and shall add a fifth part more. All right? So we don't even uh, perform. We usually on our brothers. But in this case, oh, we getting all that. All right? And give it unto him to whom it appertaineth in the day of his trespass offering. Okay? So this is dealings one with another. All right? And see... How will you ever know how boys going to deal with you unless you, you live together, unless you're in community, unless you are in. And what I mean by community, I'm, I'm talking just like a landmass of Israel, meaning there's a home that we're doing down there. You just stayed in last night. There's a home right here. There's a home right here. There's another house right here. So within that, we could steal from each other. We could deceitfully think about it. Some could be laying around. What do we normally do? Hey, man, who does it belong to, y'all? There was a little child sock here. Hey, who does it belong to? Everybody said, no, 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 no. Unanimously, everybody was like, no. Well, all right, cool. What we do with it? Man, put it in lost and found. Somebody will claim it. We do it all the time. You know? The, the little toys or whatever. Or, you know, a little workout band or something. Just anything. Me and Greg, we grew up uh, with each other. But not only that, we stayed with each other even as even as adults. And I could just li- literally leave my wallet just sitting on the, the kitchen island. And Greg would never touch it. I could leave money just sitting. He'd never touch it. I... Anything that belonged to him, I wouldn't touch. Anything that belonged to me, he just wouldn't touch. If anything, we would put it away when our friends came over. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. We, we trust each other. You get it? Yeah, we trust each other. So, but the idea is some folks will abuse you because of your well-doing. That's what I'm getting at, all right? All right, so we must love one another, all right? It says uh, chapter 19 of Leviticus. Verse 17 says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. That's another beauty of living with each other, man. That's another beauty of living around each other. You know? Now, just being honest, if you do this, it's going to prove everybody's behavior. If you don't suffer sin upon your brother. Like, off top, people already act different when I'm around. All right? I ain't going to say everyone, but there's certain people that act different when I walk around, when I come around. It's just no different when you're a straight way and pastor shows up. People act, they just function different. I show, I gave y'all my testimony of 2012. He left Chicago and they just went batshit crazy. And I was like, uh-uh. I ain't, uh, if you invite me to live on community, I ain't doing it. I'd say no. Told straight up. After what I saw, nah. I can't give all for these two folks. Ain't happening. I'll do it for you. But for them, nah. Not at all. See what I mean? So, well, what I mean by this is, now I talked about this, what, last week I think it was. Uh, matter of fact, yeah, I talked about it last week. 
Yeah, the idea is you got to cut off the snake's head mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So if you function a certain way, Elliot, well, you ain't going to do it in front of me because mm-hmm. I'm Elder Mitchell. Mm-hmm. All right? But you might do that shit in front of Christian. Mm-hmm. Because Christian ain't going to say nothing. He's going to be quiet. And he's not going to rebuke you because he's afraid. He has a spirit of fear. Mm-hmm. All right? Chris ain't going to say nothing because he's just him. That's him. Right? See, Willie's just like, okay, well, it's been here longer, so, okay. You know, Jeff just, see, I eat quiet. He's just watching still. You know, joke, joke. But, uh, <laughs> so, but you know, it's just, everybody got their reasons for not saying nothing. But then now all of a sudden, maybe Des and T says, they, they finally see something, but they say something. Okay, now he got two other people he going to perform around. Now, what if everybody's rebuking him for the same shit? Or getting on his case for the sin? Which he, the sin, not just, mm-hmm. oh, it annoys me. No. Yeah. Sin. Yeah. He's doing something that is out of bounds of Yah. Yeah. Out of the book. Out of the law. And us three get on his case every time we see it. Us three don't let it slide. But the rest of you do. Well, then how is that helping him? Yeah. So we can't improve the behavior of the community as a whole. Now, what if that's, that, that's just one isolated incident? What if Dre is here and he does something? And it's the same situation. Maybe there's only one person that deals with him. Because, boy, he's a goddamn seal. So there's a fear there because he, he might hurt me. So I don't want to rebuke him. Maybe he raises his voice or who knows. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, then you got Miguel. Same thing. He may function a certain way and maybe five people get on him. You know what I mean? So it's, a, it's an epidemic. So every time that you don't seek to love your brother, you are hindering the whole. Every single time. Then we wonder why, you know, things just don't get better. Things should be getting better because we just don't let it slip. I used to always make this statement about children. Don't, don't give them an inch. I used to always make that statement. And what happens is, you know, maybe daddy don't give an inch, but mama gives 10 yards. You know, she might give a mile. You know, so then... That, that child behavior is like schizophrenic. It's good now, but it's bad then. It's good now, but it's bad then. You know? Or maybe the mama's more. That situation is mama's. Well, mama be on it. But daddy, because he's not home all the time, and he don't get to see children all the time, he come home, he just nice and just whatever. Hey, baby, just leave them alone. Let, let them be children. You know, we do that. But then, you see what I'm saying? So same thing in the sense of when you sin and the brothers aren't holding you to the fire. Same situation, man. But that's why community can be so awesome. Because ain't no corners cut. And then you knowing that, you are circumspect around one another. Yeah. You know, you're going to hide your foolishness. <coughs> like the apocryphal say. Yeah. Man's kind of wise to hide this foolishness. Yeah. <laughs> it's the rock. Man, yeah. hey, that is so true. Yeah. One time Deacon rebuked me. Uh, <laughs> straight away. It was years ago. I wasn't an elder. I was his brother, Brother Mitchell at the time. He was at a feast. And I, I was playing I was playing some game on my phone. And it was already sundown. And it was another brother there. And so, hey, can I talk to him? Like, yeah, let's come on. And so I know my brother loves me. So he took me to the side. He was just like, hey, man, I can wait. You got that brother sitting there watching you. And you, you playing that game. I'm like, man, you know, you're right, bro. My bad. Not thinking. I'm acting like I'm in the city. Just take whipping out my phone. Playing Candy Crush or something. You know what I mean? Just that shit could wait. You know? I mean, the idea is that our, our side should revolve him anyway. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, literally, I, I had to get out of that. Because what happens is, if you let, if you give an inch in that area, what other areas will you give an inch to? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, it, it starts a bad precedence. Football, I was, I was, it was like my God. I used to, bro, I'll tell you about it later. But I used to do, it was, it was retarded. I was all about football when I was a heathen, man. And then, you know, I, was, I wanted to be like Stuart Scott. I was like, I was into NBA, NFL. I wa- even watched baseball, soccer. I did it all, just just, just cause. And so when I came to the faith, I started keeping the Sabbath. And I said, well, I'm not working. Click. Turn the TV on, boy. I'm sitting there watching the games. I'm on Sports Center. I'm watching all this other stuff. And then one day, I just was getting convicted. And I read Isaiah, you know. Or whatever, and it says if you want to be blessed, yeah. all right. So that thing is, I want to be blessed. That's what it was. It wouldn't mean that what you see. You see how people can find these little loopholes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna say the hell with it because it was too much ruling in my life. I had to set that down yes. to the point where now, man, I just, 
I, I don't hardly catch anything. You know what I mean? And that's how it should be. Mm-hmm. Y'all first. All right. So anyway, but my brother loved me enough to take me to the side and tell me that not the fact that I necessarily sinned, but more so I'm letting stumble block for my brother here. You know, mm-hmm. so and I thought that was a beautiful thing. But that's how we got to be one towards another. All right. All right. Galatians 6.1. It says, brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one uh, in the spirit of meekness, cons- considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. All right. So the same thing that you won't restore your brother and you'll be tempted in the same area. And you know what? And not only that, same shit you talk shit about. Same things you talk shit about is coming. It's coming. You know, oh, he couldn't overcome that. Or this or that. Oh, it's coming. Oh, his wife, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Then all of a sudden, y'all start acting funny out of nowhere. A year later or some shit. You wonder where it come from. Y'all put that thought back in your mind, that shit you've been saying. <laughs> gonna get to the same area rather than just being a help to your brother or help to your sister all right verse 2 says bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of messiah all right for if a man think himself to be something when he's nothing he deceives himself so we have to ask that who's spiritual among us it says now how many uh, of the spiritual ones have restored their brother or sister and that's what you gotta ask yourself all right 1 John 3.14 It says we know that we have passed from death to life Because we love the brethren He that loveth not his brother Abideth in death All right, Whoso hateth his brother is a murderer And ye know that no murderer Hath eternal life abiding in him Alright so we gotta be very careful Of carrying offenses Alright don't, don't ever just Hold offense in your heart You know the idea is you wanna get free From it and clear of it You know even if you know it, Let's say, friends, your brother's real innocent or sister's innocent in a thing that maybe they have said or done. They're not literally offending you in what they're doing. Now, I wouldn't even go to them. I'd go get it right with y'all. Because they, let's say, friends, that may be just a nature. El is not annoying. He's annoying me, but he ain't sinning. I, I just, I, I'm just offended by him. He's a walking offense. <laughs> I don't like how he sleeps. I don't like how he hums. <laughs> He hums all the songs of straightway. You know, can we just sing something else? You know, I don't know. Brother, you too joyful. You know, you, you ain't never sad. That might just offend me, but there's weakness in me. See what I'm saying? So why go to him and try to tell him all the things that and he's going to have to deal with me? Then he's going to have to deal with his spirit. The better thing to do is get your old heart right to your brother. Because you can, I can honestly see that he's just annoying me. It's, but it's, it's an annoyance for me. He's not sinning though. So what's in me? I mean, all he's doing is singing. All he's doing is humming. All he's doing is having a great spirit about himself. Why am I mad? <laughs> Why does that bother me so much? You gotta ask yourself that question. The evil's in you, not in him. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> so you can't be hating your brother. I love you. I know you don't. Because you hate his son. <laughs> all right? So we got to be careful with this type of stuff, man. And it's all speaking still toward, you see, the, the what's happening in the ministry right now. So you you being perfected, man, when you're with us, man. You can't be perfected without. Mm-hmm. Just me, my wife, and my children. I'm going to be perfected. No, you ain't. All this is is a dress rehearsal for the kingdom, man. Mm-hmm. And they talked about this last night. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You can't do it now. You can't do it then. Yeah. I promise you that. You can't submit now. You ain't going to be able to submit then. Yeah. If I can't hear my brothers now, then... It, if y'all to give me a providence in his kingdom. If I can't hear the people. Because this talks about the people going to rejoice if the righteous is in rule. Right? But the people mourn when the wicked bear rule. Then we look at, uh, who was it? Was it Rehoboam that uh, sided with his peers in the book? It was Solomon's son? Yeah, he sided, he sided with his peers rather than the <laughs> elders uh, of his father's. And he said, oh, y'all thought my father was, was, was bad. Oh, I'm even going to be even harder. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. But the people, I mean, you could, but, the, but the, the, the elders of his father were like, man, no, let the people rejoice. Be kind to them. Be, you know, he told them to be different. See, the idea is the father puts men in places to care. We're supposed to be caring for the people. Every leader of this thing should have a care for the people. Everything we do should be for the, for the souls. 
that's it. It, it. It's the care. So when I when I make a judgment on something, it's more like, okay, well, where are people at? I'm trying. Well, how's this going to affect? Okay, this 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 is always affecting the whole community. But if I care, if I put this edict out, now I'm gonna affect this one family. That's how I see it. I can't just take it like, well, this is what I'm gonna do because everybody's offended, everybody's mad, everybody wants this change. Hey, I ain't ruling like that. We're gonna deal righteously. Is what we're gonna do. And it's gonna be just and it's gonna be holy when we do it. All right. All right. So a warning to save your brother's life. All right. It says, this is uh, Ezekiel 3.18. Alright, it says, When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. So you're not doing yourself any favors by saying something wicked go about, and you're not saying a word because of fear. God's not giving him a spirit of fear, man. You know? He just ain't giving it to us. So the idea is that we should speak up. We should talk to one another. Honor one another. Love one another in order to speak. And this is what the talk, what Eric is doing. They're trying to, they're trying to throw a bone, man. So we past course trying to say, man, just honor the man. Y'all just give a call and let him know what it is. Mm-hmm. If you really want to go out in peace, do that. I mean, hey, Elder Frank left. Ain't nobody saying nothing about that. But because you're taking a platform and you're building upon another man's platform, which he gave you, and you refuse to speak out and say that you're no longer here, the mere fact that you won't do that, that's dishonorable. Mm-hmm. That's sneaky. Mm-hmm. And that's deceitful. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you're going to have all these people still just hearing you. Well, bro, you build on somebody else's platform. What you doing? Go start your own den. If that's what you're going to do. That's why I try to tell folks, if you ain't going to do what we do, go start your own thing. Let's see if y'all bless it. That's where it's at. John 13, 34. It says, The new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you. That ye also love one another. All right? It says, uh, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye love one another. One towards another. All right? So this is accountability which is needed. When we're living together, there is a certain way that I got to walk. And I got to keep myself in check because I know, you know, people like Desmond and Greg and T and D are watching me and vice versa. All right. Uh, what I dish out as a leader, I also must take uh, as well. And I have to actually abide by the same rule. OK. And uh, <clears throat> and also I have to listen as well. All right. The same shit I put out, same thing that passed. Well, I got to listen just as well as everyone else. Mm-hmm. All right. We got to be chief in these things. All right. So. When it comes to leaders, it's clear to see that the people of Israel or any group of people, uh, they have to have a lead at the end of the day. Because if you don't, then we're going to be like the book of Judges where they had no king and no judge in the land. Everybody did that which is right in their own mind. Everybody do, done that which they believed to be right. That don't mean people weren't seeking to do right. They just did what they thought was right. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what's happening. Everybody out there, you got... Probably you got hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of Hebrew Israelites right now in their home today. Mm-hmm. And everybody's just doing what that which they believe is right. That's it. But not joining together with no one. Not growing with anyone whatsoever at all. Mm-hmm. Hating white folks, you know. Um, you know, I'm just I'm just saying the list goes on and on and on. You know, hating communities, you know, living uh, still wearing earrings and nose rings and makeup and all of a sudden still looking like the heathens. You know, so there's there's everybody's at a different space and level in this thing. You good? All right. So uh, when you look back in history in any capacity uh, that you could think of, man, or whether it be chief captain, whatever the case may be, they always had somebody that led. At the end of the day, there's always a point of contact. For Yah, it was Moses. Mm-hmm. Hear him. Everybody heard him. Mm-hmm. Though that over a period of time, they didn't want. No, they wanted a king. They didn't want another man. They wanted a king. They didn't want no problem. They didn't want to do with just the priest. Not with give us a king. So, okay, well, y'all going to hear him. And therefore, that's why y'all would say, you know what? That's why they had to have their own book of law. They had to copy. And they kept with them. Think about it. If you physically write a copy of something, you know that you can actually lodge it in your mind even more, the more so? When you physically copy something. That's why they used to get you to take notes in college and in high school and stuff. Because if you write it, you'll remember it. So they would have you take notes. That's where that shit came from. Uh, anyway, but there's always been a hierarchy of things, if you will. People that don't believe it, you lost. 
But now right, we're going to go to Exodus 20, 18. It says, and all the people saw the thunders and the lightnings and the noise and the trumpet. All right. And the mountain uh, smoking. And it says that when the people saw it, they were moved and stood afar off. <coughs> Verse 19, it says, and they said unto Moses, speak thou with us and we will hear. But let not God speak uh, with us. At least we all die. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is something that we got to remember. Pastor said this many, many times. Because the people at that point in time has been like, hey, you speak because we want to hear them. Okay, cool. Ever since then, he's been using a mediator. Mm -hmm. Amen. Moses. Prophets. Mm -hmm. Priests. Yep. High priests. Whatever the case may be. You know? And then we ask for a king. So in 1 Samuel 8, it says, uh, eight, first, starting at verse 5, it says, uh, it said, Behold, thou art old, and your sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like the other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel, and uh, when they said, give us a king to judge us, Samuel prayed unto Yahweh, and, and Yahweh said unto him, saying, you hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I shall not reign over them. So there's been a man leading period ever since, like Shepherd said, period. There's been always somebody. All right, so leaders must seek wisdom and give ear to wise counsel, um, they have to be just. They have to be a good character. They have to care for the whole. Uh, they can't have any respect to persons. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, where there's no vision, man, the people perish. At the end of the day. I mean, that, the book tells us that. Plain as day. So, um, so the people need pur a purpose in this life. At the end of the day, because think about it. At one point in time, I was lost. Meaning, had all the money. Had the house. Had the vehicles. Had motorcycles. Had all this that. But still miserable. Still unhappy. Why? Because I ain't have y'all. You see what I mean? But then whenever he got a hold of me, now you know I could be at peace. I, it's something worth it. Now I see what I need to be doing. Now I know what I need to be. I got to I gotta focus on this family and raise up seed. I got to focus on the family so y'all has a remnant. And like my brothers need to do the same as well. And I want to be a helper to their faith in doing that as well. I'll leave. All right. Uh, Ecclesiastes says uh, 413. 4.13. It says, Better is a poor and wise child than an old and foolish king who will not, who will no more be admonished. See what I'm saying? This is why I'm big on people coming to me. That's why I'm big on going to shepherd. That's why I'm big on going to elders. I'm big on going to them. I'm big on people coming to me. They talk to me. Holler at me, man. You know, because I want to be admonished. I would want to be. You know, you want me just to die. You know what I mean? Die in my sin? Why not admonish? Why not go to? Why not you know go tit for tat? Why not give a word during the judgment that we fall? You know what I mean? If there's a concern, bring it up. You might be wrong. You might be right. But the idea that man, this is gonna go forth in righteousness, and that's what's key. All right. Uh, let me see here. Proverbs twenty nine two. I'm almost done here. When the righteous are in authority, the people result, but when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Okay, I said that earlier. Uh, men choosing leaders in Israel, right? We went over this quite a few times in Acts uh, 6. This is uh, when they chose Stephen, right? Y'all remember that? And a few others, six others. So they said choose seven. So uh, starting at verse 1, it says, And in those days, when the number of disciples multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily administration. And it says, when the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of Yah to serve tables. Okay. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you. So they told the people, look out among you. Seven of honest report, full of the Holy Spirit, wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. So you people go on appoint. So, I don't know. Let me just say. If if you're old Willie Sharp here, if the if Pastor Dow told you that and you were here, I mean, just name some people you would choose. Okay. Chris uh, Elliot. Chris. Chris who? Chris who? That Chris? Um, yeah, Bart. Oh, Bart. Okay, gotcha. All right. Boy, I'll, he about to butcher that. <laughs> All right, good. That's cool. You see, but he's see he he's talking to those he draws strength from. He don't draw strength from me deep. He ain't name us. 
<laughs> you good? Yeah. Stuff. It's all good. No, it's cool, man. I mean, yeah. it's cool. It's good. You, you straight? You straight, bro? You good? But no, I'm just showing though. The people know. The people have it within their heart. They go to those where they draw strength from. Okay. Mm. Even the women. The women would tell you. I mean, shoot. All right. Uh, especially if they single, it's gonna be like, all right, sisters. Uh, y'all gonna be with this brother? Can I go with you? All right, I got. Uh, let me ride with at least this one. All right, cool. That's how it was in Houston. It'd be like, boy, please don't put me with them. All right, got you. <laughs> she laughed. She knows I ain't lying. <laughs> please, please tell me you driving. I'm, well, I'm driving the Expo this time. Oh, man. Hey, don't worry. You are gonna have brother Greg driving this one. Brother Sucks is driving that one. All right, let me ride with Greg then. All right, cool. <laughs> So that's how I be, man. So the people know. Ain't, ain't, it's, it doesn't go without saying. I remember one time I, I first met Brother Daniel. And it was 2018. I think it was Tabernacles. And it was him, Lee, and Patrick. And I remember we sat down and uh, Daniel wants to know about community. And I, so I started talking to him. He was asking me questions. And he was listening very intently. And I said, man, look, I'm just keeping it real. It's y'all three, right? He said, yeah. I said, good. I said, well, you can't do community without a leader. So who's the leader? And then Daniel didn't say a word. At least said, well, we ain't really got one yet. And Daniel just kind of looked at him. You know, he just kind of looked at him like, like, huh? You know? And Patrick was like, like, D, like, Daniel. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, well, boom. That's all. See, I want to hear them say it. I, I don't need to say this one. Because yes, they know. They knew. I remember asking Pastor, Pastor, who? Hey, we going to do this community thing. Who should lead it? Y'all would choose. I'm like, all right. Hey, Pastor, uh, who we gonna give our money to? Y'all will choose. All right. Hey, Pastor, who gonna lead the community? Who gonna lead like the fellowship? Y'all will choose. I'm just like, bro. I'm like pissed off. Cause so I'm like, I just need you to tell me. Like, I don't care. It ain't gotta be me. Just just pick somebody. Nope. Just wouldn't pick nobody, man. And one day I just I just got so overwhelmed after about a year. I was just like, man, bump it. I just started doing stuff. And then Deke, from the time I met Deke, he was just, all right, man, brother, Mitch, man, whatever you say, man. I'm like, all right, cool. So it was like formulating, like, okay, I guess it's going to be me. But I needed him to say it, like if it is. And then one day he finally just started saying it, and that was it. So, but the people chose. Yeah. Yeah. So the people chose. It was, I, obviously, mm-hmm. I'm waiting on something to happen, and the people chose. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, but anyway, um, as leaders, we can't fear like Jeroboam did. We can't fear like, you know, uh, we just can't fear the people, man. We can't make decisions based on fear of the people. We can't make decisions based on the fear of our wives or of our children and things of that nature, man. Israel being joined, fitly joined together, man, is so key. So uh, I could go on and on. I got other passages, man, but I'm going to call it a day. We've been going for a bit. Uh, I think that was a mouthful. Hallelujah. I think it was quite a bit, but I think it was due uh, for the state of the ministry at this point, just to kind of hit on this, man. It's so imperative, man, it, to keep us. The idea is, man, how do we ask yourself this question, man? Do you know with the Most High? You know, how do we make Him great? You know, see, when you focus on self, see, that's how you go out of the way. But when you focus on how do we make Him great, and then, man, it's so wonderful for me to be able to look out and see. Young brothers, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, I remember I snapped a picture of Dez and McNabb over there by the fire. Like, see, I, mean, I love being able to see the young brothers coming up, you know. And I, maybe I look at Trey, you know, and I could see people like Josh and uh, Isaiah out of DMV and just all these young brothers, man. Brother Zay, Zay quiet, but it's a solid young man. You see what I'm saying? It's good to be able to see these brothers, man, just come up and about the word. It's good to see Goshen come along. You know, so quick, build the community up, you know what I'm saying, and, and you know, do what they're doing. And, and just to see it just formulate, they're coming together, how fast we're building out here. See, it's all about Israel being joined together with this thing. Yes, I don't see why you wouldn't want to be with a people. Yes, why would you want to be outside of a people? Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't, did I agree with every single, <laughs> single thing I saw when I first came to Straightway? No. Mm-hmm. But I said, man, this is the only people I see coming together. That's what I saw. 
And then over time, I was able to kind of go, you know, I was able to learn from, I learned from Deacon uh, Bell. I learned from Elder Becker. I, learned, I mean, Pastor Doc goes without saying, but I'm just showing you, I learned from the people. I learned from Brother Rich. I learned from uh, Mom uh, Vicky. You know, it's just all oh, these different things. I learned from these people. These are people that have been doing These are OG saints. Yeah. That's what I call them. And we're learning from them is what we're doing. And we're learning how to live this lifestyle. We're learning how to be together in unity. You know, because this is close. You're going to get to the book. Yeah. You know, people, they want this. This And this is what I'm discovering that people want. People read the Torah and they want to be like Moses. They want to be like uh, Abraham. That, that's what I meant to say. They want to be like Abraham and Lot. That's what they want to be like. They want to walk. But guess what? You ain't walking about going to see a, a plot of land and say, I'm going to set my tent here. Mm. That ain't happening. Yeah, we taxed it to, to death. Every piece of land property is owned. And you don't own it. You don't own it. Right? So that means you got so that means, you know, you gotta think about it. With civilization came taxation. You know, then that whole landmass became a providence of Rome. Right? And so that's why when you get to I hate to use the word dispensation, but when you get to that dispensation of time, of of time of Christ, that's what they were living like they were living. That's why they came together and brought their proceeds together. And this is the model pretty much a straight way. And that's why we do what we do. And you've got people that are without that want to do that because they want to hang on to something for self. They want, they're so focused on inheritance. Man, you ain't got no inheritance as it is. You see what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't I mean, I ain't getting nothing from my father. My father ain't getting nothing from his father. I mean, what, what are we getting? What, what inheritance are you concerned with? You want to be like Abraham. Everybody want to be Abraham. Well, Abraham had maid servants too. He had handmaids. He had he had all that stuff. Well, which one are you gonna fit that? I'm just saying. All right. Then people want to be like in the time of the. Uh, nobody wants to be like you know. Oh, oh, people want to be like it was whenever the twelve patriarchs were, you know, building their home, whatever case may be. But you still had Jacob there. It was still his home. Israel was still there. All right, then we go to Mizraim, where they was in Goshen. Well, guess what? They were still in one spot. They were in Goshen. Then it came out, and it was in the wilderness. So, well, how can you create that wilderness experience? Well, y'all separated. Y'all not dwelling together. You see what I mean? Then we, then we had, you know, we'll take about Assyrian captivity. Take about a Babylonian captivity. The split had happened. Then we come back in, and there's a people that were not a people that are now squatting in the land. You know what I mean? And now we're trying to bring back and build Israel up in the time of Nehemiah and Ezra and them. But then you got people there frustrating the work. Because they're not the people. They're just Jews by the mere fact that they keep Judaism. All right? Now we get to the time of Christ. And like I said, then that's when they start. Oh, let's put our proceeds together. Because still, they, they scattered. You had people there that some believed in Messiah, some didn't. Some believed in the Ruach, some didn't. Same shit's going on today. Same thing on say. I don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Don't believe in the Holy Don't believe in the gifts. Don't believe in laying on of hands. But yet we laying on hands in the name of Jesus at the feast and people jumping up and down and being healed. We got people getting healed of lupus and stuff. I mean, bro, it's just you know, we get man, that 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 little girl I remember about her, Georgia. Skin scaly as I don't know what. Boom, come back the very next year. Nothing. I mean, bro, it's like yeah, bro. They've been going to the doctors. You know what I'm saying? They've been going to the doctors. So this is y'all's doing. So, how, I mean, I don't see how you could deny. I just don't see how you could deny, man. So, anyway, we talk about y'all's people, us being together. This is the assembly and the calling of y'all. All right? This is what it is, man. We are called to assemble together until his coming. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're going to continue to do. And we ain't gonna, we're not going to stunt these cats that are without. Either We're either going to be a beacon and a light to some, and we'll be abhorred by others. And that's, that's, that's what it's going to be. That's what it's going to be. Period, point blank. You're going to have going to be loved, and we're going to be hated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this today. I say glory to the king.